When it's time to assemble the joints that you've made using screw pocket joinery, there is a method to the madness that we have to follow here. There's a couple things going on. One is you do want to make sure that you're using the right screws for the job. So a couple things here, they're specifically screw pocket screws. They've got some attributes that make them screw pocket screws. Additionally, you want to make sure they're the right length because these screw pockets run at an angle and it's possible if the screws are too long for them to exit on the face of the adjoining piece. So make sure you check the length of the screw. Now as far as my screw collection or selection goes, in this case I'm putting red oak together. That's a hardwood, so I'm using fine threaded screws. Now one of the things that you can't do is simply hold the parts and drive the screws because they're going to come out of registration, they're going to slip, you'll end up with them in the wrong spot this way, you'll certainly end up with them out of registration this way, where the face of this piece is no longer aligned with this piece. We can get around this a couple different ways. There are specific clamps for these jobs that look like this, and with an anvil on each side, when I squeeze the piece, bridging the seam of the joint, and then lock that down, I've now got this basically in a vise that holds the pieces in registration front to back and it also locks it down so that it's in the right spot registered on the edge of this piece. Another way to do it, and it's a way that I actually like better, is to put a plate into your workbench. So in this case I've got it in a board that I can then move anywhere I want in the shop. This plate has got a keyhole in it. The keyhole accepts a bolt on the bottom of this clamp so then I can do this, and this, and this, and when I clamp that down, what it's doing is it's pushing the show faces, the front of the piece, against this, holding them nice and flat against each other. It locks it down this way so that it's nice and tight and allows me to assemble this. So we're going to do the clamp in the bench in order to put our screw pockets together. We're only missing one thing, and that is glue. Now, I've talked a lot about how glue doesn't have much effectiveness on end grain, and in fact, I'm guilty of putting a lot of screw pockets together without using glue. And then I was working at my friend's shop, my friend Charlie has a cabinet shop, putting together face frames in his place, and he yelled at me for not using glue and said, we always put our face frames together with glue. So I did, even though I figured he was nuts for doing so. And one of the face frames I assembled I put the rail in the wrong spot and I had to come back later and move it. So I took the screws out and even though only about 10 minutes had gone by, when I went to move that rail there was a significant bond between the two pieces, in fact such that when I took the rail off it took some of the edge grain out of the adjoining piece. So even on that end grain the glue did a really good job of holding. So ever since, thanks to Charlie who I thought was wrong, I have been putting glue into my screw pocket joints. So what I've did, done now is I've got the glue in there, I've got it where I want it to go, push down the clamp, boy and you can really see on that seam the way it pulled that joint closed. And when we're done, got a great looking joint there. So the refresh on this is make sure you're using the right screws. Make sure that you do use glue in the joint. Make sure that you're clamping it in such a way that the faces will stay in registration and laterally it'll stay in registration. And assembling your screw pocket joinery is going to go just great for you.